Okay, so I'm starting here on one of the default patches and um, just want to get to a blank slate. So I'm hitting settings, uh, pattern, clear all data. Yes. Okay, so now I'm starting from nothing. See, it even erases the name there. So I've got default six sounds on there. So as usual, I'm going to start by uh, selecting some sounds. So I, what I'm thinking is I'm going to do these three as um, my percussion sounds, uh, like my, my drum track, and then these three as uh, bass and melody sounds. So for this first one, I'm just looking for a bass drum or kick drum. Let's see what I got here. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Let's try that. For track two here, I'll get some sort of snare sound. Oops. Like that. Pretty basic, but it's nice. And let's do this one as some hats. We'll do full full wave party for my drum sounds here. Wave party makes some great sample kits. Alright, let's do I'll do both closed and open hi-hats on this. So I'll set my default to be closed and then I'll do some sample locking for open ones. Here, go for that one. Okay. So. So I've got a pretty long sample sound on my kick drum here. So um, I'm going to just start with, you know, kind of the bass. I'm going into my sequencer mode. Um, let's see if I can get something a little more interesting than four on the floor. Um, that is still four on the floor, just offset. Let's see. So as I'm putting stuff in here, I'm already hearing kind of as I play with these trigs 12 and 15, I kind of like them turning on and off. So let's just start our generative sequence right here. Um, so I'm going to set both of these to have some sort of uh, you know conditional trig here. So for 12, let's make this one uh, just a percentage, about a third of the time, 33%. And then for 15, let's make that one 75% of the time. Let's see how that sounds. Let's leave that for now. Moving on to snares. Let's see how these sound. Okay. Um, maybe I'll try a little live record on the snares. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Um, Maybe a little retrig here in the end. Always nice for snares. So how about this one here that I s no, I'll do it on 15 actually. Okay, so turn retrig on. Let's get into the rate. Whoops, I didn't need to do that. Uh, retrig on. Yeah, let's hear that. Okay, I'm gonna say that's too fast. Bring that back down. That a little shorter too. There you go, nice little tight fill. Okay. Um, what am I do next on here? Well, let's, let's just get our hats in and then cycle back around. I think um, I think I'm just going to turn on every every trig here for the hats, and then 
we'll do some variability on that. Uh, so let's just try that. So sequencer mode, every single trig. There we go, okay. So now let's do something to, um, to vary this one a bit. So one of the simplest things is just track chance on this whole track, right? Start turning it down so it randomly drops certain notes. Right, that already gives it some groove. And also, even before we get into that, let's maybe add some swing to this one. Tired of this sound, so let's um, maybe add some filter cutoff to it. Yeah, so I'm going to apply the LFO to the filter cutoff to just give us a bit of variability in this kick drum sound. So go into our LFO, uh, destination will be frequency, give it some depth so it actually does something, and let's hear how that sounds. these others so you can hear this more clearly. So note how when we add the, the sawtooth wave as an LFO, it takes um, uh, like what's normally, like here, if, oops, if I just turn this off, turn the depth down to zero, same as turning it off. Okay, so here it is without any LFO. Okay, now when I add this sawtooth wave LFO, let's turn that up a bit. It makes it sound a bit like a plucked string. So you get kind of a pluck effect here. It's, it's like plucking the string on a bass guitar is what that sounds like to me. Let's see how it's kind of layering on itself though, which I don't like. Let's just tweak it some more. It's interesting, but I think it's still going to get a bit monotonous. So I think what we're going to want to do maybe is just make this one longer. 16 steps. Um, uh, yeah, it's just maybe repeating a bit too often. Oh, what's my tempo? 120. Okay, that's fine. We'll leave that. Um, so let's do, um, let's just extend this sequence. So I'm going to go function page here. That gives me all the, uh, the scale set up here. So I can go in and uh, anywhere in this menu, doesn't matter where you are, if you tap the page button, if you notice on a length here, it's cycling through the different lengths in units of 16, which is super convenient. Um, or if you want to set you know, a non-16 multiple, you go through here and just turn it. So um, I think I'm going to stick with the easy 16. So let's just make this, uh, let's try it just a 32 step sequence. While I'm in here, I also want to change this change setting. Change here means when you're doing a pattern chain, um, at what point, at what step should you switch over to the new pattern? So the default is 16, but I've now made this uh, 32 length, so I probably want this to always be the same 
as whatever my my length is. Not always, but you know, that's if you're unsure, just make it the same. So let's try that. So this is now a 32 step sequence. So I've got two pages. They're both identical right now. So I'm gonna go in and mess around with the second page and give us some more variability. I think I'm going to make this this a pretty chain right here. So this is kind of our tried and true technique from before. So the very first one I'm going to set to be um, maybe instead of a percentage, I'm going to set it to these the ones with the number colon number. And what this means is um, how many uh, cycles around does it uh, wait for before this turns on. So the first so basically the way you translate this is it's going to play on the first of every three playthroughs, or this would be it's going to play on the second of every three playthroughs, or the third of every three playthroughs. So let's try it on, yeah, let's try three of three, see how that sounds. And then the rest of these I'm going to set to pre, oops, missed it, pre, so that they all follow. Okay. There we go. So they all follow 12. So 12 is going to fire on the third of every three playthroughs, and then uh, 13, 14, 15 are also going to fire along with 12. So let's hear that. So we're going to have to wait for at least three playthroughs in order to hear this do anything. There's two. There's the third one coming. There we go. So by doing that, I'm only using a 32 step sequence here, but it feels like a much longer sequence because this is only happening on the third of each uh, of each three playthroughs, right? So, um, okay, so let's leave that for now and let's see, let's turn these back on, see if there's anything else I wanna do. One thing I want to do is just turn down the volume on my bass drum a little bit here. Okay. Um, let's see. So I want to focus on the snare, so I just muted the hats for a minute. I want this volume up a little higher. play with some things and see if I find something interesting here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So first thing I played with was sample length on my snare sound, and that's sounding kind of cool, like the way it cuts it off short. So I'm going to apply an LFO to my sample length um, and allow it to kind of randomly shorten these notes and make it a little more glitchy. So let's give that some depth too, and let's play that.
Okay. So that's kind of cool. With the uh, the square wave there, it's just rapidly turning on and off the uh, the sample length. So it's like as if I'm jumping down to a lower value of sample length and then jumping back up. Um, and that's kind of a cool glitchy effect. a pretty glitchy song that's cool so uh, let's get into our hats again okay so what did we do here we yeah we took the, the chance we did a bit of swing um, what else do I want to do so I wanted to also mix in some, uh, if you remember, all of these were closed hi-hats. I wanted to mix in some open hi-hats too. So I'll sample lock some of these as open hi-hats. Um, right now, yeah, this is a 32 step sequence. Maybe for this one, I'll make it 64 just to give me some more space in there. So go in here, I'm just gonna tap that, get up to 64. I'm also gonna set my change to be 64. Um, for me, I've just found it's easier to just do it while you're in here um, versus forgetting about it later, so. Um, oh, why don't we save too? This is about the point in the process where I'm like, yeah, I should probably save. So go back to here, rename. I always just end up renaming these things as random characters because it takes too long <laughs> to enter names. Okay, there we go. Yes. And then, oops, pattern, save, yes, save. Okay, we are saved. So um, let's, okay, so I've now got 64 steps, so four pages here. So let's say on steps, on pages two and four, I'll add some open hi-hats. Um, so let's see, which ones do I want to open? How about on, just on those four steps. Let's see how that's sounding. So for this one, I'm going to uh, go to the open folder and I'm just going to randomly pick one. 20, sure. And we'll hear how that sounds. Oh, and then I'm going to copy this one. So copy trig and then I'm going to paste it into each of these. There we go. So all those are now blinking. All those are now my open hi hats and the rest are all closed hi hats. Let's hear how that sounds. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, here, let's mute the rest of this so it's a little more obvious. So we're just listening to this, the hat track now. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I like that sound just by chance it worked out. So I'm going to copy this one again, and then let's switch to our page four, and then just paste it on the same trigs. So one, five, nine, and 13. Okay, so let's listen to that all the way through. Throwing a little retrig here on one of these, maybe, maybe this one. So I'm on my fourth page, 13. Let's just throw a retrig on this particular one. Something crazy fast, why not? There we go. Maybe. 80 was a little too much. Let's back it off to 64. Yeah, that sounds good. And I think I actually want it to last a bit longer. So I'm going to turn the fade off, length up a bit. I think, though, that this next. Yeah, see this, this trig 14 still cuts it off, so I'm just going to turn those off to give it some space to ring out. Oh, let's, 
skipped it that time because of the track champ. There we go. <laughs> Maybe I'll cut it off by 16 here. Cool. Okay. Cool. Let's leave that. Let's combine these things together again and see where we're at. So another idea, on these ones, these three here, or sorry, yeah, these three here um, that are leading up to this retrig, I think I also want to do a retrig on those, but it's go they're going to be brief. So it's going to be a, basically I just want it to play two notes. Um, so I think this will do it. Let me try this. Let's just try that and see if that's what I want. It gets into the full retrig. That's what I like. So copy, paste, and paste. Now let's hear that. Whoops. No, not clear. What are you doing? <laughs> That's cool. It's a little bit up, bit up. All right, cool. So I've got at least the start of my rhythm track here. So now let's move on to uh, tracks four, five, and six, um, which are going to be my more, more melodic stuff. So for track four, I'm thinking I'll do a bass line, and then five and six, I'll do melody. So um, for track four, let's load up some sort of bass sound. Now, kind of the obvious thing would be to load up a sample of a you know a bass guitar or a bass synth or something like that. But I want to introduce something else here that's just kind of one of my favorite things to do on the model samples in general, which is play with single cycle waveform. So I made myself a whole folder here that I call one cycle or single cycle. And there's a ton of these in here. Um, I'll include links on the video here if you want to play with any of these. They're all free. There's so many out there. Um, so I just kind of randomly pick stuff. Let's say, let's see what's in this folder. So. Um, these, so these are all tuned to either C2 or C4. Um, so I'm going to try C2, this being a bass sound I want, you know, lower notes probably what I want. So first thing with single cycle oscillators is you have to turn on loop mode because it's a very short, uh, just a single little waveform, just like uh, this little diagram here, right? So all I'm getting is that single little, you know, in this case, it's a sine wave pictured here. And if you loop that over and over and over and over, you make a tone um, the same way that a synth works, basically. So by looping a single cycle oscillator um, on any sample player, like the model samples, you've effectively created a synth. Um, and this is called, uh, some people call it wave cycle synthesis, um, or there's various different names for it. Wave cycle is the thing that makes sense to me. But um, anyway, so let's start playing with this. So again, with loop mode off, or oops, right, it makes that, that little blip, but it doesn't sound like much because it's just a single little wave. Turn loop mode on, there we go. We get these beautiful tones. And the shape of that waveform is going to change the texture of that sound. Ooh, look at that. Yeah. Right there. Let's go with this one. 
that's pretty. So what's also interesting about these is that um, you can, since I know this is already tuned to C2, so that means that should be a C and 9 here. Whatever you have loaded on your, your track button is also going to be number 9. All right, so those should both be a C. So I could, you know, kind of count up, right? So if that's C, then C sharp, D, D sharp, etc. Um, so I could kind of play melodically that way. Um, I could also, of course, use the pitch knob here. Okay, doing it this way, it's like playing through these, it's like playing on a piano. Doing it this way, it's like I'm plucking a guitar string and changing the tuning knob, or the, you know, I'm tuning uh, the, the guitar string up and down. Right. Set that back to zero. Oops. Let's get you back to zero. So that's one way of changing the tone. Another way is, of course, once you are in your sequencer mode and you have something sequenced here, I'll just, I'll mute the rest for now. So we're just hearing this. So if I am playing, what's going on here? Oh, because I'm still on a 64 step sequence, that's why. Um, just for sake of demonstration, I'm gonna shrink this back down to a 16 step, just so it's quick. That's good. So let's just put on some notes. All right, so when you're here, you can then also take a single trig and note it shows you the note value there. Now it doesn't know, the model samples doesn't know that this thing's already tuned to C2. So it shows C5 though in reality, well, uh, that, that's gonna be a C2, right? But I can still, you know, change relative, uh, like so if I, if, my C5 is actually a C2, then this should be a C sharp 2, right? Um, so I can go through and I can kind of tweak all these to be, you know, whatever I want and make some sort of a different thing. Right? Cool. So that's pretty easy. Um, let's turn all these off. And then let's do, uh, there's one other way that you can play with these single cycle oscillators, which is pretty interesting. So I'm going to do just uh, one repeating tone here for a minute. Let's do, let's do a couple like that. Okay, so there's my repeating tones. So I can change the length and listen to this. So what's happening there is instead of playing the entire um, the entire wave, I'm cutting it off at some point. So instead of the wave starting and stopping at the same point, like a wave normally would, I'm cutting it off. So it's jumping from some, you know, say this peak, it's jumping from this peak back down to its kind of neutral position. So that's why there's that kind of clicky sound in it. Like anytime there's a jump between two values, you get a click basically. So um, let's play with that a little more. And also the shorter you make it, the higher pitched it goes. So it makes that buzzing sound, which can be cool if used sparingly, but also obviously can be kind of annoying. Same thing to uh, the start point. Again, I'm just shortening it, so it's having the similar effect. And I can play with both of those. Okay. In this case, I like this low tone that it already is, so I don't really want to make it shorter because I don't, I don't want to raise the pitch. Um, I think this is already a great, a great area to be in. So I'm going to um, do something more interesting than that. So let's see what I want to do with this. Let's turn on my other tracks and maybe I'll just try to improv something, I don't know. Oh, and with the bass line specifically, I know that I'm gonna to wanna to change the notes and I could play them in here, but often what I found uh, for me is an easier workflow is to start by just playing the bass kind of rhythmically as if it were another drum section, um, a rhythm section. And then I go in as a second layer and I change the notes up and down. So basically I start by playing, just getting the rhythm of the bass line and then I, as a second layer, add in the melody of the bass line.
So I've got something basic there and I'm gonna tweak it a bit with the sequencer. I'm gonna turn the volume down on these other tracks a bit, just so I can kind of focus a little more. I can always turn it back up later. Okay, um, so now let's let's add some, some notes up and down to this. So I've already showed a lot of different ways to change the note or the pitch on this. Um, and actually, here's, here's yet another way. <laughs> so let's say instead of choosing the notes I want to play, I want it to just kind of randomly play some notes for me. So this is a way of kind of generating a random um, melody. So I can use the LFO, and I could set the destination to be, um, you know, one of the things that we saw changes the pitch. So for example, the pitch knob or start point or length, any of those will work. Um, so let's do... Yeah, or fine tune also, which is not a knob, but um, that, that would also work. Let's have it change the pitch. Let's try that. Give it some depth. Um, choose how do I want it to change the pitch? Well, let's try the random wave, the sample and hold wave. Uh, so it's just going to basically randomly pick note values for me, right? Let's see how that sounds. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> there we go. Turn the multiplier down a bit and you get something a little more reasonable. Or... So the, the larger number I set for depth, um, the more it's going to vary that pitch up and down. So it's like I'm expanding the scale that it's picking from. Right? Okay, so the two multipliers sounding good. It's like a good amount of notes that it's playing. Um, and I'm just just curious. I'm gonna switch this over to be length and just see how it sounds with that instead. Cool. So it's just got that buzziness to it. You know, versus so that versus pitch. Some more clean tones. How about that fine tune? So that's interesting. Fine tune gives me more of like a warble, kind of like a tape warble, or like a, a you know a string that's a little bit loose and going out of tune, kind of thing. Um, let's play with that a little bit. Make it stronger. Okay, so uh, that's there's, that's a way of creating like kind of a random sequence of notes, and let's try these other waveforms and see if there's something else that's maybe uh, what we want. So this one could be useful if we just wanted to go between two different notes, right? If the ba if you just wanted to have a two-note oscillating bass line, then the square wave could be used for that. So let's play with that for a minute and see if I can find a pitch you really like. 
maybe I'll have it drop to a lower tone, go negative. Um, and then I think I am just going to pick a few notes to be different from this, so I'll just kind of guess and check with that. Oh, my velocity was so low on a lot of these. maybe extend this out to be a bit longer. So let's just take this out. Yeah, let's try 32. Okay. And um, yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so now I've got two pages. Um, Here's some of my second pages from these ones, right, so it sounds a little different now. Try something different back here. Old friend Retrig. Just focus on the bass for a little bit. And there's the secondary retrig menu too, um, which is here. Always on is interesting. Oh wait, that's not going to apply here, but. Always on means that um, if you want to retrig from the button here, you turn that on, right? So I don't have to, like normally if this is off, I would have to hold retrig to get that effect, right? This one effectively just holds this button down for you. So you can just do it whenever you want. So nice performance effect, but it's not affecting the sequencer at all. Um, okay, and let's see, let's go back into this particular one. I want it to fade faster. Oh, and let's extend this out to our full uh, 64 steps also. So I'm going to go back into one of these. So you were already. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay, so I just realized something I was kind of doing wrong earlier. Um, so when I was in this, this scale setup, the function page menu, Notice at the top here it says mode P3, 
PTN, but that means mode pattern. So I've been changing the length for the entire pattern, uh, which is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to change the length for each track individually. So I forgot to, to set that. So um, that's okay. I can go back. So now I do want my whole pattern to be 64 steps, but certain tracks I want to be shorter, right? So um, I can go in and see all these ones. So this one does have a bit of variation. I think I think this one I just meant to be 32. It doesn't really matter, honestly. <laughs> but um, let's go ahead and just to show that. So I set it to mode track now. And for this track one, my bass drum, it'll be just 32 steps. Okay. And then I'm also, well, I could leave the change at 64. That's fine. Right, so now I only have two pages for this one. Track two, uh, same thing, I think, I forget if I had this be, yeah, see these are all the same, so really I just wanted this one to be 16, there we go, and then track three, these ones did have the full 64 step variation, so I'll leave that as is, and track four, I think I was just going for, oh no, I did do other stuff, okay. Oh, this is when I was just messing around. Let's turn all that off. Let's, let's hear how this sounds. Maybe I do want this one 64. Yeah, so actually having a blank page on my baseline gives it a little bit of a break, which I think is nice, so maybe I'll keep that. Everything we were just doing was on the bass track. Um, let's move on to tracks five and six, which I plan to use for some more melodic stuff. So I'm thinking what I'll do is... Um, for track five, I'll kind of write a melody, and then maybe track six will be a harmony on top of that, something like that. So let's find a nice melodic sound. Um, and I think, again, I'm going to use a single cycle waveform, because I love them. Well, let's find you, maybe. So I'll go for a C4 note this time, something a bit higher. Oh, and again, turn on loop, otherwise it'd sound like much. Now yeah, get out of sequencer mode. Okay, I'm gonna try this one. Okay, so I'm just gonna mess around a little bit playing this live on top of what I've already written. So just to just to demonstrate a technique here, I'm just going to show you something. Let's mute all these, okay? Um, so I may not use this in the song, but just to demonstrate. So I'm going to uh, let's get our length. So again, I'm in track mode, not pattern mode. Get it back down to 16, just so it cycles quickly. And let's just write something basic and boring for now. So it's just playing those four notes forever, right? Um, and it's all the same note. These are C4 notes on a piano. Um, so let's say I wanted to build chords, right? Well, uh, using this, you know, you can't play more than one note per step because it's monophonic per track. So I could load a sample of a chord and that'll work fine. But you can also use two tracks to build chords. So um, let's say, yeah, let's make it even simpler. Let's just say I did one, two, three, four like that. So each of those is a single note that it's playing. Now, um, what I want to do is take uh, one of these. So I want to make sure I get the same sound, right? So um, this sound, this dark six, should be in my sample box, uh, or my RAM folder, I mean, because I'm using it. So anything you've used recently is in your RAM folder. So if I switch to track six, and I load a new wave here, go down to my RAM folder, I should see... 
Oh, there's too much in here. <laughs> Maybe not so convenient. There it is. Okay. So it is in my RAM folder. I just, I just went the wrong way on the wheel here. Okay. So there it is, Dark 610. So now I've got the same, same sound loaded into both of these. Oh, again, turn on loop mode. Without loop mode, does nothing. Okay, so those are both the same. And now I'll turn on those same first four trigs, okay? So both of these patterns are now identical, right? Um, if I go into track five or track six, they're both identical. So let's listen to what that sounds like. Oops. Oh, this one's still set to 64 steps, so let's get it down to 16. So now they're both the same. And I had put those on the wrong page, so <laughs> let's just add them again. Oh, it's muted, that's why. The frickin' mute, man, always. There we go. So what we're hearing there is both these tracks are playing the same tone on top of each other which doesn't really sound like much because it's the same tone. But on this one, I could say change the pitch of the entire track, so let's pitch it up. Um, so by the way, with the latest firmware, they've added this, uh, this fine tuning pitch, the decimal point there, right? Which it can be a little tedious if you want to jump in integer values. Um, so the trick for that is you just hold function while you turn this, and then see so now it's only changing the interval number or sorry, integer number without changing the, um, the decimal, which is nice. And so I could do, let's say 12, that's one octave up, right? So now I'm gonna play the same tone, just one octave up. So track five is playing, uh, I guess it's a C4, and then this one would be playing a C3, I think. Okay, so that's playing an octave. Um, now let's do it with an interval. So like if I did, seven, that would be a fifth. There we go. Okay, so we now have a two note chord playing on these, um, which I think is cool. Um, so it's, you know, it's it's a lot. You have to add one track per note of your chord. So, if, so the max you could do is a six note chord if you used every single track on this. Um, it's, you know, maybe a bit wasteful in terms of your track space here, but um, but it's just a cool way to do it, I think. So um, let's let's play with this. I'm gonna get rid of these, and I'm gonna go back to track five, and I'm gonna try to write something I actually wanna keep, and then I'll use this technique to make it into a chord. So basically, instead of writing a single note melody, we're gonna write a chord progression that is gonna function as our melody. So let's do something here, and I might need to listen mm, what I wanna do. I don't know. I don't know what I wanna do. Let's turn these back on and listen a bit. Okay, so I can already tell I'm going to want a longer sequence. So let's bring this out to the full 64. Typically for melodic stuff, I, I do it up you know, the, the max sequence length. When you already have something there and you expand the sequence length, it just duplicates it on every single page, right? Um, which is generally handy. So now on each page, I can just kind of tweak things a little bit and get some variability in my sequence. Let's try something like that. So rhythmically, um, I'm liking that. That's kind of the same way we did the bass, the bass line, right? Where I started with the rhythm, um, and then later I added in the notes. So what I'm going to do for this is um, start playing with some notes. So let's see. I, I do want to manually pick my notes here because I want to be able to raise them up an interval on my track six here. So I think I'll keep the so the current note that is playing the C. I'll keep that as kind of my my root. Um, and so now maybe with this one, let's take it up to an E. 
And this one, let's try just making a C major chord and see how that's going. That'll be a G. This one will be, and then we'll, maybe we'll bring it back down. E. Back down to the original, see how that sounds. Okay, this one, ah, I thought that was a G. I did that wrong. Okay. So that should be the G. That's back to the E. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so it's just going up and down a C major chord, right? Da, 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 da. Um, which is fine, but let's maybe do a more interesting chord. So let's try, uh, yeah, C minor. So, okay, so that's a C minor down to a C major. See that? <laughs> interesting, maybe. Um, let's have this be an F, I don't know. So I'm gonna, I liked actually the second note just being all C's. I might change that later, but on the third page, so this is where I wanna get some more stuff going again. So let's bring this one up to, yeah, D sharp to make the C minor chord again. I should say a C minor arpeggiated chord, right? Cause they're spelling out the chord one note at a time. And then this one was an F on the way back down. And back to C, and then maybe we'll do something low too, like it, and it'll be an A, and then down to a G. Let's try that. Okay, that's cool. Now maybe on the fourth page I'll keep playing with these lower notes. So, so it was a G from the last one, and now let's um, bring it down to an F, and then. E, so I'm just going down the scale here. And then D sharp. And C, and then bring it back up a little bit. F and G. Okay, let's try that. Let's roll with that. Um, so now here comes the admittedly somewhat tedious task of um, making the same notes on T6 except one uh, interval up. So I, I'll probably go for the fifth interval, which would be um, you know seven, uh, the, the pitch raised up to seven. So what I can do, let's see, is there a way to copy an entire track onto another track? Because that's kind of what I want to do here. Um, I don't know. Let's try some stuff. Here, I'll save before I mess this up. Okay, pattern saved. So if I hold the track button, let's say copy, copy track, hold this track, paste, boom. How easy was that? Let's make sure that worked. Mute all the rest. <laughs> that totally worked. Right, because I already had this pitch set up to seven. So it's playing that same, you know, melody of arpeggiated chords, um, but it's playing it uh, a fifth up, an inter the musical interval of a fifth. So let's turn this back on. So now with tracks five and six on, we should be hearing two note chords um, throughout that whole melody. was thinking I had to do each one of these manually. Just copy and paste the whole track. Lovely. All right, let's get this back together. Okay, so volume on these these are both the default values. So I'm gonna do a little mixing here, because remember previously I lowered the volume on all these 
Um, let's just get everything back to the default value of 60. And then I'll see what I want to do with the mix here. Yeah, so these chords are definitely too loud. So let's bring them down to say 50. Let's try that. Okay, cool. Um, so let's do a little save again. So let's see, what do I want to do from here? So um, what's interesting about building chords this way, of stacking the two notes, is that um, I can have uh, I can have these two tracks interact with each other, right? So for example, um, I, I'm going to kind of break my chords here, but it could be interesting just to try it. So this entire track, I'm going to set it to be a 50% chance, right? So each of those notes has a 50% chance of happening. And then track six here, I'm going to set it to, um, or no, oh, okay, on track six, I'd have to do it trig by trig. Well, I'll do... It's going to take a while, so I'm going to do it a little bit differently. So on track 5, I'm just going to turn it back up to 100. On this first page, I'm going to set um, a bunch of these tricks to be 50% chance. Okay, now on track 6, on page 1, I'm going to set these all to be inverse neighbor, so neighbor with the line over it. And what that's going to mean is that the neighboring track is always the track that is one below whichever one you're on. So six minus one is five. So track six is looking at track five, and it's saying anytime these the trigs on track five do not fire, then track six will fire. So it makes it this either or kind of thing. And I only did that on the first page, so the, the last three pages are still gonna play our chords. So let's hear how that sounds. Cool. So on the first page only, it, they have this a bit of a random thing, right? Where each one, it's either playing the root note um, or it's playing the note from track six. Uh, so okay, the root note is on track five, or it's playing the the note from track six that is a fifth higher than that, and it's kind of randomly swapping those out at the 50/50 chance for each one. But then on pages two, three, and four, all the rest of mine are playing the two note chords that we wrote earlier. So I could continue this throughout the whole thing. Um, I kind of like what I like about this is that it gives you this sense, like, the bra your brain gets to kind of manually piece together, oh, well, I hear this note, and then I hear a different note that's a fifth apart. Your brain can kind of imagine the chord without hearing the chord, if that makes sense. And then on pages two, three, and four, you're actually hearing the chord. Um, I don't know, so to me, that it's this kind of build-up thing that I like. I just want to hear that again. So I, wanted, I think I want to do that same effect on page two here, where I just have it playing the C note over and over, because um, uh, I think that could that could benefit from this effect too. So, so on, oops, I'm on track six here. Let's go back on track five. Oops, no, no, not pattern. I mix it. Okay, no, don't mute. <laughs> Wrong button. There we go. Track five, page two. Uh, so each of these trigs, I'm going to also set to the 50/50 chance. So it means now. Once I'm done with this, each one of these is either going to play the C or it's going to play a G, which is one fifth or a pitch of seven above C. Okay, so there's that. So all these two fifty. Ch -ch -ch -ch. 
and remember I'm not using oh you know in this case well I'm already done in this case I could have used copy paste trig since each trig is paying, playing the same note I could have just you know set the first one to be 50 and then oops not copy track I want copy trig paste 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 that would have been faster because they're all the same note so it's going to do the same thing um, so on track six I will do that All right so I switch to track six so on the first one here I'm going to set it to inverse neighbor All right and now I will just copy trig paste 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 cool and let's hear that have to kind of really listen to pick it out because there's so much other stuff going on. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll mute the rest of these just so we can focus on this effect here for a sec. And I'm trying to cycle through the pages with the right timing so uh, hopefully you can see where we are in the pattern. I picked a fifth here because that's you know an easy to use and musically pleasing interval but of course you can do this with any interval you want alrighty so at this point um so at this point I kind of want to take another pass through all my tracks I've got something in all six tracks now I can take another pass and see if there's things I want to tweak um, you know this is maybe where I would go back in and kind of add effects and things like that, or maybe add some sample locks. I haven't used much of that yet. So let's see where we're at. So I definitely want this track three, my hats, I want that to happen less frequently. Um, so um, what can I do with that? Do I have a, yes, I already have a track chance set on the whole track. Um, what I'm thinking might be a good idea for that is actually just to do this with pattern chaining. Because really what I want to do is, is I want the whole track to turn on and off, which I can do, you know, by muting and unmuting it. But, you know, say I want to focus on something else. So let's, um, Let's just do a little bit of pattern chaining here and see how that goes. So I'm in A13 here. So I'm going to uh, copy my whole pattern, copy pattern, go into my slot 14 and paste. So that should now be identical. Okay, so in this one, um, let's try turning the track chance way down on T3, see how that sounds. T3 is playing a lot fewer notes. I'm also going to use my cutoff to like just soften it a bit. So it really throws it into the background, right? Okay. I think my bass line I want to do something with also. what happens when we add a bunch of reverb to our, our chord tracks here. So I'm just going to turn turn these way up to infinite. Let's hear that. Yeah, that's cool. So 
with infinite reverb, you can get into this feedback loop situation where it keeps getting louder and louder and louder over time. So oftentimes it's better to be just a little bit under infinite. You gotta dial back that infinite, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna save this one here, and let's um, let's just pattern chain these two and see how they're sounding next to each other. So it's 13 and 14 here. So I'm gonna do so press and hold 13, and then add 14. So it's just gonna be those two looping forever. Notice it is playing the full 64 step sequence on each one because we had set the change to be 64 on any one of the tracks, I think. Um, and you can also, for the whole pattern, actually, we had it set to 64, right? So it's playing the full 64 step sequence. I could change that and have it cut over sooner if I wanted, but in this case, this, that's what I want. Well, let's hear it again. So I like those two next to each other, and I think I want to add yet a third. Um, so I'm going to copy our original pattern, 13, and paste it into slot 15. Okay, so uh, on this slot 15, um, I think I want to, I think I wanted to do something with, with the snare here. bit of a tangent, but that was interesting. So I went into track five. I started pulling back the filter on tracks five and six to kind of bring it into the back of the mix a little more, but I added some resonance on track five here, and that's giving some interesting effects. I'll do that to track six too. All right, anytime you hear that, it's time to add an LFO. So let's get that. Let's just do this classic frequency cutoff, give it some depth, and let's just try uh, maybe a fast, oops, too fast, fast sine wave. Let's try that. Yeah. Too fast though. These, in this kind of advanced uh, LFO setup menu, we get to function LFO. Uh, so reset, what that means is that the LFO wave resets per trig. Every single trig, it starts over. So like if I'm um, in here like with the sawtooth wave, 
you know, it's it's doing it. It's doing the sawtooth wave 64 times per trig, um, which is giving that 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 crazy warble effect, right? Um, and yeah, so like. And fade just means that the, the, uh, the LFO effect is fading out over a while, which I think is fine. At, uh, this means start phase. So if you want to, normally the LFO wave starts at the zero point here. Um, but like actually in my drawing here, if you look, it's actually starting a bit at a positive value, not at zero um, in this little diagram. So that's what start phase is doing. It's saying don't start the LFO at zero, start it at some other number here. The reason you would do that is uh, if you want your LFO wave to be out of sync with the other waves that you're playing with. So that's cool. Um, I think I'm liking how this is sounding though. Let's do that. And then I'm going to do a similar LFO on track six here too. And But they can be different LFOs, right? Which is pretty cool. Get you on frequency. So I set track five to have a positive depth and track six to have a negative depth, which means that track five, it's turning the cutoff value down. And on track six, it's turning the cutoff value up. So that's interesting. All right, so this is definitely gonna be my like weird spaced out <laughs> kind of. Uh, chain inner pattern here. So let's do some other craziness. Let's see. Let's get into my kick drum here. And let's. What do I want to do for it? Let's mute the rest and just focus on this. First off, this is 64 steps, and I really want it to be, um, oh yeah, there you go, 32, should be 32. this LFO to be something else. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna again set a negative value so that the LFO randomly makes the note longer. Or not randomly, but oh, maybe randomly. Let's try a random wave. Let's do this. Change our destination to be delay time. Can we do that? 
delay send. Oh, it can't be delay time. That's too bad. Okay. It can be delay send. here and let's do the pattern chain again kind of see if these things are working together so my pattern was 13 14 15 pattern chaining is a little bit tricky in that um, you have to always be holding down one of the trigs so if I hold down pattern and I pick my first trig that I want to be in my pattern or sorry I pick my first pattern that I want to be in the chain now I pick the second one which is gonna be 14 all right um, and then I pick the last one which is gonna be 15 it just adds them there um, but I'll just show you kind of there, there's another way if you're doing something more complicated than just 13, 14, 15. So hold down the first one, hold the second one, and let go of the first one. See, it's still chained. And now add as many others as you want, including the first one again, right? So I can have it loop back around. As long as I'm holding one of the trigs down that's in the pattern chain, I can keep adding as many as I want, and I can let go of the pattern button to free up my other hand, which is nice. So I can make these kind of more complex patterns like that. There we go. <laughs> I had a bunch of stuff muted on that one. It's okay. So it's playing my pattern chain, but all these three tracks are muted for all of them. Which might, maybe it's like a cool way to kind of get into the tracks. So I can just selectively unmute them when I'm ready.
Cool. Well, there you go. I think we'll uh, we'll leave it here. Thanks for watching.